Hello and welcome back to TGTV. Today we have got a very special episode, if you like. Today we are with the brand new Rolls-Royce Ghost. Now the original Rolls-Royce Ghost came out in 2010 and actually ceased production at the end of last year. This is all new and it will be due out very, very soon. So without further ado then, we're gonna look around the new car. We're gonna see what's new for 2020 because as it happens, pretty much all of it's new. So let's have a look. So first things first then, obviously we're at the front of the car, but the overriding theme of this new release is post opulence. Now those are the terms that are being thrown around. Post opulence, you might be asking, what on earth does that mean? Effectively, it's pure, simple, clean, classic, reflecting Rolls-Royce's kind of uh, overriding ethos. Right then, at the front of the car then, the first thing that's probably screaming out to you, we'll touch on the grille, we'll go around the rest of the design in a second, but I just want to talk about this grille first and foremost, because it's very, very nice, cool piece of design. You may well see in this very brightly lit studio here that the grille is lit up. That is not camera trickery, that is not lighting. That is actually part of the design. So for the first time ever, Rolls-Royce have actually got lighting within the grille. Now that's presented problems for the designers and the people that actually are tasked with making these things because they've now had to redesign how this whole grille is made. Previously, the whole thing was chrome, but they've actually had to brush the back of the kind of the struts here because it was too reflective and it was causing basically chaos in there. So even tiny little details like that, you have no idea. It just looks cool and nice and simple from the outside. Little details like that have caused, uh, you know, engineering, engineering issues. That's one thing that will come across when we go around the rest of the car. It looks amazing, it looks clean, it looks classic, it looks very simple. Um, but behind the scenes, the kind of the effort and engineering that's gone into the thing, unbelievable. So we'll see that as we go around the car, but just little details like that has caused hours and hours of engineering anguish, I don't doubt. Um, but the overall kind of end result just looks phenomenal. So these driving around at night with that lit up, it's gonna look so cool. Anyway, headlights are all new. They've kept this kind of almost rectangle design, uh, but within it, we've got this new light bar in here. And actually you'll see everything in here as well. You see this little line there that actually matches up with the panel gap there and that flows all the way to the back of the car. Very nice detail. Another thing as well, which you wouldn't instantly get looking at the car, this is all new here. Why, I hear you ask. When the bonnet comes up, the spirit of ecstasy and the whole kind of setting it sits in still sits there. So this, all this chrome stuff is actually stuck together. It's all fixed and the bonnet comes up around it. Now I'm no engineer, but I, I don't doubt that that probably took God knows how long to actually work out how to do. But that's all new for this car. And again, looking at it from the outside, you wouldn't know that that's gone into it. But again, it's just, you know, that kind of engineering expertise that's gone in behind the scenes. And what that does, it gets rid of the shut lines, which again, just keeps the kind of a clean nature and clean uh, aesthetic of the car. Now, a lot of people out there will be specking these with two-tone kind of bonnets and there'll be brush bonnets and all sorts. Someone at Rolls-Royce is gonna have to mask up and kind of uh, paint up the bonnets. So they're gonna have to create a clean line here, which is crazy. And as with Rolls-Royce, they do a lot of hand painting on their cars and they absolutely nail it. This is no exception. This has got a hand painted line along the side. We will get onto that. Coming around the side of the car, they've actually employed a technique that's often seen in boats. Instead of putting kind of like vents and kind of holes in the side of the car and all that kind of nonsense, what Rolls-Royce have done is that they've actually angled this bit down here on the side. You can see in this, this kind of fold here progressively gets sharper towards the back. Again, kind of adding to that sense of movement, but also what you get, you get reflection of the ground underneath there, which kind of adds to that sense of movement also, which is really cool and often seen in boats. Very cool. Also on the side of the car here, you'll notice on this side profile that the size of the glass there and the size of the glass there is pretty much 50-50. And that reflects the fact that the users of this car, they'll be sometimes in the front, sometimes in the back. And the experience for people in either position is going to be equally as enjoyable, which is what Rolls-Royce are very keen to stress because this car isn't, you know, a car that you, it's got one kind of, one purpose. You just use it to be driven around in. It's for, it's for all purposes. Coming around the back of the car, then you'll notice there's no shut lines at all on this car. Other cars of this kind of ilk, you'll notice there are shut lines everywhere. This actually looks like pretty much, if you look at this one panel here, this whole piece coming all the whole way over the top of the car, that is all one piece of aluminium handcrafted. I don't make cars, but I can guarantee that's a very, very difficult thing to do. It's an extraordinarily clean design. 
There are only pretty much a few panels on the whole car, which is crazy. I mean, the boot has to be a separate panel that opens. Um, but yeah, it's unlike anything else out there and it's extremely, extremely hard to do. Again, when you come around to the back of the car, there aren't badges everywhere. You haven't got kind of denotations, kind of SE, Sport Plus, whatever, none of that stuff. You've just got Rolls Royce on the back there. You've got no fins, vents, or anything like that. Very clean, very classic, and it's unmistakably Rolls-Royce. You'd see that at a glance from a distance, and you'd know exactly what that was. And again, the tail lights, they've been slanted to add to that kind of sense of movement over and above the last Ghost. But again, they've kept that design, so it's unmistakably Rolls-Royce, unmistakably a Ghost, um, but it's just had that kind of extra little tweak thrown in. Really, really nice. Loads of little details on there here, and there's so much more to this car that I'm even letting on. We're doing a walk around anyway, come on. Now time to jump in the car. This is where this car comes into its own and I can't wait to show you the interior. So I'll get in the back, I think, this time around. I'll see you inside. So then, I'm in the back of the Ghost here. As you'd expect, you've got all more cons, but what strikes you off the bat again is the kind of simplicity. There are huge pieces of leather in here. There's not stitching everywhere. It's very clean, very classic and it's just a very calming, nice place to be. And again, that extends into the front, which I'll show you in a second, but the simplicity in here kind of belies how much is actually going on. So you press the little button here, we've got a table, we've got a screen in front of you. Also in this center console here, it looks like just a normal kind of seat and, a, and an armrest. You pull it down, you've, kind of, you've got all sorts going on in here. You can control the media and whatnot from here. You've got your own kind of interface inside this little panel underneath here. You've again, you've got, you can even put a games console in here, whatever you want. And again, behind here even, there's more. Inside here, there's a fridge with little glasses and whatnot. Again, you wouldn't know all that was going on when you're just getting here off the bat. But again, it's just, and you can adjust obviously the seats as well on here. And you can have a little, little recline back here as well. On the roof then you've got the you've got the lining that everyone i think pretty much everyone specs that these days again with rolls royce you can specify even kind of a, a date and they will put the constellation from that year and date in the roof with the stars which is mind-boggling um i wouldn't be able to know either oh this you got cup holders as well wonderful stuff you've got usbs down there you can control all sorts you've got an hdmi cable you've got the climate control Everything going on back here. Everything you can ever need. So then I'm now in the hot seat and it's time to go into actually what powers this new uh, beast. So it is actually a V12 twin turbo with 850 Newton meters of torque. It's now a 6.75 liter engine, not a 6.5 liter engine as it was in the previous Ghost. Not only that, it's on an all new chassis platform, all new for this car. And it also now has all wheel drive. The previous Ghost was rear wheel drive. It also has all-wheel steer a very clever system and i can't wait to actually see how that all works so this really is a go anywhere do anything car it's going to be just as good to drive as it is to sit in the back and i think i guess that's key for ghost customers this is the sort of car you'd potentially have a driver during the week and you'd be in the back and then on weekends you could drive it around and enjoy it as well so very cool and unlike a lot of cars that are probably going to be um, thrown together in the same class as this car this really is a car in its own class really most other cars of that genre that will be compared to this will be fast versions of thereof you know the amgs the um the speeds and whatever this is not like that at all and whilst the performance on this will be pretty mind-bending that is not why people buy these cars 0 to 60 is going to be fast enough more than fast i mean 850 newton meters torque 6.75 liter v12 twin turbo it's not going to be slow top speed again of no real relevance it's going to be in there it's going to be more than enough, shall we say. But again, that's not why people buy these cars. It's not something Rolls-Royce really capitalize on or really push, especially with the Ghost, um, potentially some of their black badge models. But buyers of this car, they're not going to really be that fussed by that. They're just going to need a car that is very good at being a car. And this, very definitely, is very good at being a car. The other thing as well that impresses upon you when you get in here, you aren't bamboozled by that many buttons. There's not that much going on, which is actually very, very nice. Most modern cars, you get in there and it's like being in a fighter jet. There's just buttons everywhere. You can adjust everything, how the buttons feel when you press them as 15 settings. There's a million different LED settings and all the rest of it. There isn't that nonsense in here. It's very, very clear. It's very calming. Everything's where it should be. Everything feels correct. It's lovely. As with all Rolls Royce as well, you can absolutely customize the hell out of everything. 
this particular wood in here, I mean, you could probably write 10 pages on how this wood was put together. Um, it's actually a, a composite of different woods that's been reformed and then it's got actually got wood grain in there. So again, how you make that, I have absolutely no idea, but that's just Rolls Royce. They, they are pros at, at kind of interior finishing and interior materials. Again, if you go in there and you say, I want this made of, you know, unicorn hair and you want that made out of, you know, um, God knows what, they will make it out of whatever you want. Same for the stitching, same for the leather. You can get any finish you like and any color. The bespoke department of Rolls Royce is pretty much what they're all about. And I don't suspect many people will take cars like this completely bog standard off the line. One thing I want to just show you because I'm quite simple. Most cars you touch, uh, the kind of the air con vents and all the rest of it, it's plastic. This, hear that? Very enjoyable. That just shows that's cast out of a single piece of metal. And you move it and there's no creaks. There's nothing. It's just smooth. It's lovely. This is one of my favorite parts of the car, actually. Again, this is the launch model, so it says Ghost on there, and I believe this will probably be how they come, um, base, kind of base spec, but there aren't any base spec Rolls Royces. No one does that. But this is actually one piece of wood with holes behind it and then lighting behind that. That looks so crisp it could be actually just a digital screen, but it's not. It's actually a piece of wood with light behind it. You can option that with whatever you want. You can obviously put whatever word you want in there. You can put your name, you can put your mum's name, you can probably put a picture of your face in there and you can make it out of whatever material you like. Very cool. The possibilities really are endless with Rolls Royce. Again, that goes down to the carpets here. You can option various different types of carpets and I can confirm that I could probably go for a nap on those. They are super thick and uh, lovely stuff. Price of the car then, probably I would say, I would estimate, I mean, the official pricing hasn't been released, but I would imagine you wouldn't get a huge amount of change for 300K uh, once you've added some options to it and all the rest of it. Again, there's nothing really to compare it to. So I don't, I don't think that's really of, of any kind of relevance to the price of it. Um, it's a hell of a lot of car, it's a hell of a lot of money. And you know, you know Rolls-Royce customers, that's, that's par for the course to be fair. Um, I don't think that's actually that unreasonable. When you think about something like, totally different, my Pista was over 300K and this feels like almost twice the amount of car compared to that, so that's the price anyway. Not that anyone really is bothered about that at this point. So my point earlier when I touched on the glass and the size of the two pieces of glass front and back, that's actually exasperated. When you open the doors, you get a sense that this car really is both about the driver and also being in the back. You can see that both these openings, here and here, are pretty much the same size. Now the doors are open as well. I'm gonna to touch on the point I wanted to mention earlier. As you'll know, all Rolls Royce is extraordinarily quiet once you're inside, and that's because there's sound deadening all around the car, between the panels and all the rest of it. Everything is sound deadened. However, there is one part they deliberately do not sound deaden, and it's down here. And that is because this whole car effectively acts as a resonance chamber for the car's audio. It effectively, the whole thing acts as a large subwoofer. Now, I'm not saying the whole car is a, an overpriced subwoofer, that's absolutely not what I'm saying. However, it's just a very, very cool piece of design and something that not many people know. There's actually a deliberate kind of resonance chamber and a bit of sound deadening left out to actually aid the sound in the car and the sound of the hi-fi. And those that have used the hi-fi and turned up the music in a Rolls Royce will vouch for the fact it's, I know, it's better than probably most nightclubs, to be honest with you. And unlike most manufacturers, Rolls Royce actually develop all their audio in-house. So they have a separate department that does their own speakers. They don't simply just ship in speakers from another brand and wedge them into their cars. They actually develop everything in-house. Another very cool touch and unique to Rolls Royce. One final thing then I want to show you just before I let you all get on with your lives. Rolls Royce have introduced a new feature in this car they've not put in any of their models before. Now, you'll all be aware when you press a button, it closes the door. The door closes on demand on a button held up there. Now that is on the Wraith, that's on the previous Ghost, it's on the Phantom, it's on the Cullinan. Great, brilliant, fantastic. However, for this new Ghost, Rolls Royce have introduced opening now they haven't put on a button because if they put a door opening on a button people would arrive at their destination just go boink and the door would fly open into the street and that is the opposite of sensible not a good idea at all rolls royce clock that fantastic great no cyclists are going to be maimed phenomenal however what they have done you now pull on the handle here and it's all like a slight motor which kind of allows you to peek out in the car see what's going on assess whether or not you know you want to open the door fully you pull it again and it's on a motor that actually pulls the door out and makes exiting the car a nice, friendly, easy experience with minimal effort, lovely stuff. 
So on that note, thank you very much for watching. A huge thank you to Rolls-Royce for allowing me to look around their new ghost ahead of pretty much anyone else, which is amazing. I feel really, really lucky to be able to see things like this and video things like this. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Do go check it out on the Rolls-Royce website, on their social media and all the rest of it. For now though, thank you very much. Ciao for now. See ya.